Hey, happy Thursday morning to you, everyone, and welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. You know what? We've only got about a month until Preterist Pilgrim Weekend 2018 here in Ardmore, Oklahoma. Uh, be sure to contact us. Let us know you're coming. We're may, uh, By the way, no cost to attend, no registration fee, but we just need to know you're coming because we're having a catered meal. All right. Well, I'm sharing with you the idea. Uh, I've, been, I've been developing the idea of the tribulation and the resurrection. We've segued into that from the harvest because guess what? The tribulation would give rise to 144,000. Revelation 7, the 144,000 come out of the great tribulation. So, this 144,000 who are the first fruits of those redeemed to God from man, Revelation 14, 14, they are the ones to experience the great tribulation. But what are they? First fruits. First fruits of what? First fruits of the harvest. Now, I've shared with you <clears throat> that Jesus was the first fruit of the first fruit. Following Leviticus chapter 23 exactly. You know, in Israel's harvest time, Israel's festal calendar, you had the first fruit of the first fruit. That was barley. That was followed by the first fruit, which was wheat. Well, that follows perfectly. Here's Jesus, who is the first of the first fruit. And then guess what? On the day of Pentecost, 50 days later, you have the first fruit. See, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, but wait. And after four months... Then comes the harvest. The Feast of Harvest is the Feast of Sukkot, otherwise known as the Feast of Booths, Feast of Ingathering, Feast of Harvest. Now, I suggested to you over the last couple of videos that the harvest would take place at the end of the millennium. Remember, the 144,000 are the first generation of Jewish Christians. Do you catch the power of that? Uh, you know, you just must. The 144,000 were the first generation of Jewish Christians. They are the first fruit of those redeemed to God from man. Revelation 14, verse 4. What are they waiting on? Revelation 14, <clears throat> they're waiting for the harvest. Revelation 14, the harvest is at the time of the judgment of Babylon. Who is Babylon? The city where the Lord was slain. Now watch in Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew chapter 24, we have Jesus predicting the end gathering at his coming, which is Revelation 14. We have Jesus predicting his coming and the end gathering, the sending forth of the angels to gather together the elect. Well, that's Matthew chapter 13, the time of the harvest at the end of the age. Beautiful harmony. So Matthew chapter 13, harvest at the end of the age. Matthew chapter 24, the end gathering at the end of the age in that generation. Revelation 14, the harvest at the time of the judgment of Babylon and the coming of the Lord. Who is Babylon? The city where the Lord was slain. Now watch this, folks. The first fruit are the 144,000. They are not the end of the harvest. They are the beginning of the harvest. Now watch. In Revelation 14, you have those, the saints, the martyrs who have been beheaded for the word of God. These are parallel to those in Revelation chapter 6, the martyrs of God, who are the hundred and the forty-four thousand. What are the martyrs in Revelation 6 waiting for? 
vindication. But there are the 144,000. What are the 144,000 waiting on? The harvest. Those in Revelation chapter 20, at the beginning of the millennium, are the 144,000. They are not gathered, as it were, only at the end of the millennium, the, the, uh, the gathering of the first fruit began at the beginning of the millennium, but that means the 144,000, which already existed prior to A.D. 70, because the first fruit were already in existence in James chapter 1, okay? So the 144,000 were already being gathered as the first fruits, they were ruling and they were reigning with Christ for how long? Oh, for a thousand years. What were they waiting for? The harvest at the end of the millennium. And when would that harvest take place? Once again, at the destruction of Babylon. Folks, if the 144,000 are representative of those in Revelation chapter 20, then point number one, the first fruits were being gathered prior to A.D. 70. I, you know, some people are saying, well, the millennial began in A.D. 70. Well, not if those in Revelation chapter 20 were the first fruit, because the first fruits were in existence as early as A.D. 50, prior to the beginning of the millennium according to those who say the millennium began in AD 70. The first fruits were already in existence. But what does that mean? It means that their living and reigning with Christ for a thousand years was their time of waiting for, waiting for the harvest, which would take place when, once again, the judgment of Babylon. But the judgment of Babylon was in A.D. 70. First fruits prior to A.D. 70, harvest at the destruction of Babylon at the end of the age, i.e., at the end of the millennium. Hey, look, once again, you need to get a copy of Joseph Vincent's excellent, excellent book, The Millennium, Past, Present, or Future. Joseph does a fantastic job of demonstrating that the millennium, number one, it was well known in Jewish thought that a millennium could be 40 years. That's right. It was well known. It was taught in Jewish rabbinic writings. This is not a new concept. By the way, it's not a preterist invented theory. And Joseph does a fantastic job of demonstrating all of this, showing that the harvest was in A.D. 70. The first fruits were not gathered in A.D. 70. The first fruits were in existence before A.D. 70. The harvest was in A.D. 70. And once again, that means the end of the millennium was in A.D. 70. So get a copy of the book. Go to my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com. Order the book and remind me that you saw the offer on YouTube or Facebook, and I'll pay your shipping. Well, thanks so much for joining me. Do not forget that tomorrow, Lord willing, I'll have another video exposing, reviewing, and refuting Joel Richardson's book, Mystery Babylon, Unlocking the Bible's Greatest Prophetic Mystery. Well, I'll say this as kindly as possible. Mr. Richardson has unlocked nothing. He has muddied the water. He has distorted the testimony of Revelation. And I will show you that in powerful fashion in tomorrow's video. So we'll see you on the flip side.